I was standing on top of the Tokyo Budokan right now, as you can see, because I think that's very representative of fitness. Um, I guess I want to say, like, before I came to Japan, I was really big into weightlifting and fitness. <laughs> and I probably still would be, if it wouldn't be so expensive and hard to get a membership. Well, it's not that hard, but for me, I would have to get my bank card first, and now that I have it, I don't know if it's worth the money for me. But I guess I also learned that I don't need the gym to be able to move, and for me, it's never been about like ego lifting or looking the best or something, it's more about moving because I'm so restless if I don't move, like I need to move every day for a bit at least. So yeah, I guess what I do now is just walk around the block or go to that park that you just saw sometimes. Also my share house has like two little weights that I use in my room sometimes for home workouts or do yoga. Um, I just found a way to be creative with fitness again in a way that's even like very fun, like I don't even miss the gym right now because I'm just having so much fun experimenting with my own body weight and different things that I want to learn and the different things that you could do still. Sorry, I'm out of breath. <laughs> I just ran up the stairs to the Budokan. By the way, the Budokan is really amazing. They also have a weight gym where I've been to because you can buy like a day ticket here. Um, and that's really amazing. So if you ever here, check it out. <laughs> For breakfast I'm having wait, this kind of stuff, which I bought thinking it was oats, um, I should have known better. It looks like oats, but it's kind of like a barley grain, or maybe it is like the oat base, but not like milled yet, I don't know. Anyway, I cooked it a little bit longer in the microwave, and I think it's edible now with a lot of different stuff on top. Also, I bought this thinking it might have an... A simul I knew it wasn't peanut butter, but maybe it would have had like a similarity to peanut butter, but... What is this? Japan? I don't know, why can't you make peanut butter? <laughs> um, yes, so I guess this is gonna be my breakfast. Also, I always eat a bunch of nuts. I love nuts and some cinnamon. Okay, there we go. Um, wait. This is my look for the day. I'm gonna go to uni right now to do a clay workshop, which I did in the last vlog as well, I think, or a vlog ago. Um, but my clay piece was so bad that I was like, no, I'm gonna design another one, because these things are gonna be hung up in the in the school, and I don't want that piece of shit to be hanging there <laughs> as the only memorial of me. So we're gonna go back and hopefully make another clay piece that's gonna look a little bit better. Um, also because I feel like I've always said like, oh, I study art, but I never actually told you like what my courses are like or what, like how everything is going here. I'm just gonna say it's not like the the anime feeling like I remember watching like Blue Period before coming here because it's like um, an anime about going to gay die and I'm going to gay die. It's been like a mixed experience but I have I'm having a lot of fun like for example we have an assignment this week where we all got like cheeky cameras but these aren't like the normal Fuji film you just press a button and our assignment is like to use up a film and then with the pictures that we have make some kind of artwork so it's kind of an analog task and um, these cameras are actually pretty hard we uh, tried them out in school and the problem with them is they're not like you press a button and everything gets magically adjusted you've got like the shutter here and you can keep the shutter open as long as you want so for example if I press this now the shutter is open all the time which means I can obviously double double lighten the picture is that the right word in English? then you have to like do this and I'm gonna show you some of the pictures from the trial period. Where are they? And the problem with that is that you don't really know or get a feel like how long you need to take keep the shutter open. This is actually a self-portrait. Don't it look pretty in here? I'm sorry, this is the best picture I've ever taken of me. I get some mishaps like these where it's just everything is just a little bit too light. But in the end I figured it out and was able to make like a few okay pictures, I guess. I'm gonna show you in close-up later. I guess this is what trial and error looks like if you work with something like Polaroid. <laughs> The phrase or like the practice of romanticizing your life has been really popularized by TikTok and I'm not immune to trends like that. When I first saw it though I have to say I was not a big fan of the idea of romanticizing your life. Not because I think it's wrong in a way but because I think social media often places too much value on 
how you look on the outside or how something is perceived from the outside. And the whole idea of romanticizing your life basically means you try to put a picture perfect filter on your life in a way. That way you feel better about the things you do in your life. I don't know, like when I first saw it, that's the way I thought about it. I thought, wow, this is a way to trick yourself into thinking you need to have like the perfect life and you're living it right now. But you could also think about it in a way that you normalize your daily practices and your daily things and you make them something special. So in a way, even though it doesn't say it like in the title because romanticizing your life sounds so much different than that, but in a way it's just a way to be more present and to appreciate the daily acts in your life and to take them with gratitude and yeah if you think about it like that isn't that a really beautiful practice personally for me i'm living in japan right now and i felt like when i first arrived here i felt this huge pressure of being not being perfect but having this perfect daily rhythm and i think that was because i saw it like from the vloggers or from the videos or all the anime that i watched like that romanticized japanese life you know what i'm talking about And I was living day to day and was like, huh, this isn't like that at all. Like, this is just normal life in another country in a way. And there are still hardships and I still lie in my bed sometimes all day not doing anything and then feel bad about missing my homework. There are also days which are very fun, but maybe chaotic and not as pretty. And like, my skin isn't a picture perfect filter of everything and the food I eat always doesn't always taste like the explosion that you're expecting or something. Like, it's just life. There's up and downs and there's so many different things happening. But in a way that was putting me down because I was like, wow, this isn't like, the romanticized version of it but in another way i want to try more to appreciate the everyday in a way that could be described as romanticizing my life and my life was beautiful before i came here and my life is beautiful here it's just the way that i look at things and just to change that mindset i think just to change the way that you look at your everyday life i think that's a goal of mine sometimes i get too caught up in worries or my thoughts like i'm a very big overthinker and when I say that I don't mean like oh I overthink something like I overthink everything every single time and my head is always so full of thoughts that I can't fall asleep at night because I'm thinking too much and it's really a problem and I'm working on it like I started I don't know how many of you read the book The Artist's Way is a very popular book about strategies to be more creative and one of the big main strategies of the artist's way is to write morning pages to fill six pages each morning and that might seem like a lot like writing six pages by hand is actually like it takes you some time Um, and I'm not doing six pages each morning no this isn't the romanticized daily life goal morning routine that it seems to be but I'm trying my best to jot down some thoughts when I can ever so often in my journal and I set like goals for myself I'm like but not like in a way I want this and I want that but more in a way where I want to envision the person that I want to be that day. Like saying, I'm grateful that I woke up here, I'm grateful for the tea that I'm drinking right now. Today I want to show up as a kind version of myself, I want to be kind to myself and to others, and I want to bring more patience into my day and to be able to accept everything that comes today. Or another day I might write, today I really want to focus on my study, I really want to sit down and I want to give it my all and I want to really focus on that thing. I think that's the way that I want to interpret it, like romanticizing a life. Walking through the streets, even if it's raining or if it's sunny or whatever, but saying, oh, I'm so glad that I get to have this experience and to be here. And it's not gonna be every day that you walk around with that mindset, but just to be conscious of it and to be conscious of the way that you look at each moment in your life, I think that can make a huge change in your overall happiness. And I don't know what your goals in life are, if they are to earn a lot of money, to make a family or whatever, but my goal, I feel like, and I'm struggling with that because like, of course, what's your life goal? Like, what do you want to do in your life? And of course you have dreams and aspirations, but I think my main goal is just to be happy. Like, um, because I'm overthinking all the time, I'm always thinking like, I wish that everything would calm down in my mind and I could just be peaceful and happy. And it's not something, like it seems easy, like just stop thinking, but it's not that way for me, I don't know. So I have to work towards that goal to quiet my mind someday and to be peaceful and happy. And that's a goal that I will probably take years to achieve or maybe a whole lifetime, who knows. But I think it's a nice goal, isn't it? What do you think about the romanticizing your life trend? I still think in a social media context, it still has its flaws because Even I'm I'm making videos right now, I'm trying to seem like, oh, this is so pretty. And of course, I'm trying to show the best sides of everything that I do and experience. Um, But just be aware that this is not an everyday occurrence or this isn't what everyday life looks like. Rather, this is one day that I edit together and that seems nice, I guess, for me. But I'm trying to make it a practice to look at that way every day. 
yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm not making sense. <laughs> Everybody out there, I hope you find something you can romanticize your life with. Like you find the peace or the serenity and the happiness in each and every day and each and every moment. And I really um, recommend The Morning Pages or just reading an artist the artist's way. It's really a great book. Anyway, um, also thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, buy me back on my channel. <laughs>